All right, so we're recording, and then, like I said, if you'll just hit that button. So uh, we have Ben Clang from Verandas in uh, Atlanta. Is that yes. what you got? Um, and he is one of the, uh, I guess, the, the first contributor? The first, what do you, like, what, what do you consider when you're, like, the first guy that's, like, on board behind after this guy? And I know that guy's been a contributor. Like, he's done something at first for something. First. Um, the first non-J. The, the first non-J. Or I should say, I say mid access. I think Jay's Kim, as well. Committer. Yeah. That was the word I was looking for. Core yeah. committer. The words. Committer. Uh, like Marcel, the former Rail Sports in England. And okay. And the guy was okay. Ruby. Like Ruby, the Ruby Central, the like not some the Ruby. Okay, they both committed. Okay, that was very good. Okay, so the first, first from the community. Community contributor, committer. So he's going to talk about the roadmap for for adhesion, and welcome. Okay, thanks. So I'll get Lenny go ahead and let you direct our. This is we're so we're in the process right now of moving all of our existing wiki pages over to GitHub. Um, I, I think it'll actually be a lot more maintainable. Certainly, the community themselves can go ahead and, uh, and contribute directly, which is, which is really nice. This is this is sort of, um, this is on GitHub. This is in the Adhesion repository. It's, it's a collection of somewhat ordered notes. It's not terribly structured yet, but uh, this is the roadmap page. And I'm just going to go over kind of quickly where we are today, where we're likely to be a couple weeks from now, and then a little bit further on what we're hoping to do in time for 1.0. So I don't know if it's going to happen today, but in the in the very near immediate future, we will we'll be releasing Adhesion 085. There are a number of bug fixes. If you, if you actually look at our bug tracker on White House, you'll see a list of all the ones that have been closed for 085. That by itself is, is uh, I'm pretty proud of that. We've also got all of the unit tests passing again, which I think is another, another good sign of it, just of the overall kind of keeping the quality as, as high as it has been. As uh, so far as features, what we've added is XMPP support. And I've been talking about this a lot because I think it's, it's really cool stuff. Um, this brings the, the power of, of Jabber, of XMPP, into Adhesion, into your, into your telephone apps. So you have access to things like Presence. Um, the guy that wrote it, Ben Langfeld, is working on some really cool pub-sub mechanisms for, for sharing uh, events coming out of Asterisk. Um, at this point, it's sort of just a framework uh, for building things on top of telephone applications. I think we'll start to see a lot more come to it through components, through um, just what the community chooses to do with it. But I'm really excited about this, and it will be uh, the, the basic connectivity and, and the objects to, to communicate over Java are, will be a part of 085. Um, Jim, would you scroll down a little bit for me? Which is it, this one? Uh, Go off the right side of the screen and then give me a projector. Off the right? Yep, there you go. Click and then you can start scrolling down. Okay, now we're good. Keep going, keep going. Okay, that's good. So this part of the page is um, things that we'd like to consider as part of future 08X releases. These are things that I feel are not really structural changes, but they're things that will fit nicely into what we've got today. Um, the first, and actually the one I want to talk about, is, it's an exciting development of this very Adhesion Conf, is AHN Hub. We've talked in the past about making components be more reusable, more shareable, more accessible. And to that end, Chris Matthew has registered us on a lark, ahnhub.com, and the uh, matching Twitter handle. And we'll, we will be using that um, as a place for the community to publish information about components that are available for use within Adhesion, and to, uh, to go find the information, search for pieces you need, pull them into your application, and eventually install them as gems, and, uh, and just immediately have access to an enormous amount of useful stuff. Um, some of the other roadmap items, we're looking at moving adhesion tests back to, well, when this was written, RSpec. I'm not sure that that's the best way to go. I'd like to get some input from people on the best way to do unit testing in adhesion, uh, and also to do examples of component sure. testing, as Eric was just talking about. I think that'll be helpful. I can talk about that a lot. Okay, yeah, that'd be great. Um, and that actually goes into the next piece about the application testing framework. Really. I think with, uh, that, that speaks directly to components, being able to test these sort of units of, of functionality within the within telephone applications. Um, so yeah, a lot of testing. We would like to see a lot more of that. If I get you, scroll down some more. 
Um, and then, okay, so last was a duplicate of age and hub, which is to say we want to be able to distribute components of gems. Looking a little bit further down the road towards uh, 0, 9, 0, we want to move uh, at least the AMI part of adhesion to event machine. That should improve, well, performance and reliability, I think. Uh, they, they, in the, when that code was first written, event machine wasn't available for JRuby. It is now. We're willing to rely on that because it is available on the platforms that people are using for adhesion. So that would be a big piece. Um, depending on Depending on how it works, we may look at moving other pieces to event machine as well. I'm not 100% I'm not clear on um, which parts we use, but we may use event machine for AGI. We may use it for um, the free switch support, which is the next hit. We want to get event socket outbound and inbound a part of it. Uh, here's one. Yep. Uh, I, I did actually talk to TMM1, the event machine maintainer, last night, and he agreed that it probably is not going to gain us anything to be using event machine for the AGI stuff. Okay. Because of the I, synchronous nature of it. Okay. I've talked to them too in person about it. But uh, it's yeah, it definitely works for, for AMI. And did you talk to them about convertibles as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure whether that would apply. Yeah, that was, um, so so that will help and the the problem that you still run into with that is that there is a there is a thread pool limit for the number of concurrent deferrables you can have running. Um because each of those is using a Ruby thread. Right. And so in the, the end server has that too and we passed them infinity, right? Yeah, in event machine I believe those are all pre spawned. You set the number that you want to be. Um, and it's kind of a limited thread pool. And so uh, in the end you're not really saving anything above just having one thread per and it is adding some complexity on top of it. To have the, to have to do that as opposed to just having each call be in a, um, in a thread to begin with. Yeah, I think there's complexity about what we can talk about more. You know, there's complexity in having two different like I/O systems and complexity in how we can maintain threads. So at least for AMI, and then probably inbound yeah. event socket for free switch. Yeah, for AMI, it's awesome. Yeah, and it's good to have the timer too. We, like just having a machine in that loop one be awesome for, for the time itself. Yeah. Um, so in addition to event machine, we're looking at getting to, and this is I think the big focus of the 09 release, will be bringing adhesion to additional telephony platforms. Um, the first target we've been talking about a lot is free switch. I think that's kind of an obvious logical next step. There's code in the project for it. It has run on free switch in the past. Gate, I've looked at the protocol a little bit. I don't know if it's a perfect fit, but it's something we'd like to look at, possibly a target. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, Trobo is interested in having an ability to connect adhesion back to it. We'll look at getting that done as well. Yeah. Um, and there may be other telephony platforms, and, uh, and really that's a good chance for the community to tell us, you know, where Maybe are we going? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Moho. Moho. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, you know, tell us where, where you'll be using it, what makes the most sense to you, especially if you're willing to contribute code, all the better. Um, okay, and then there's a few more just sort of stuff that's um, documented here. It's not really assigned to any goal. Maybe you can just scroll down to the bottom. Yep, that's it. <laughs> so, but dump your ideas here. So uh, really, we'd like to find out, you know, we don't just want to do this in a vacuum. What do you guys need? What are you, what are you using? What would, what would be useful to you? We want to consider that as we one comment the points in my presentation. That would yeah, yeah. some really great ideas. One comment on Yate while I was over at MooCon with the whole crew there. None of the Yate people showed up. None of them. And there was no Yate anything. Now that could have been Stefan not inviting them because he kind of changed the format of it. But the sense I got is that Yate nobody really is using it. That it's just kind of an academic exercise. Mark, I don't know. Does anyone see people using it? it? No. No. Yeah. The Yate people do a lot of consulting in Romania. Yeah. And it's it's like it's being in Romania. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, but but there are like people who who put it through pretty serious uh, use. Um, thing is, uh, controlling media is something that they don't do much of, but they do in theory have support for it. Um, and the way that they support it is with like a low level bridging API. Yeah. Where you like bridge. Which is actually kind of nice. Yeah. In reality. yeah it's kind of, you bridge to like a file and it plays a file. Something yeah. Like that. So, so 
hopefully it hears you to the point where it understands the concept of bridging and channels and stuff like this and where I mean, we talked about a lot yeah. this a lot with ozone where you're you're just bridging to a, a big uh, group of different types of uh, yeah. uh, resources basically. And I guess I bring this up in the context sorry, do you wanna go for it? Sorry. I, no no worry. In terms of putting Yate on the roadmap, I don't think it's something that would get widely used. Okay. Right? Yeah. So to try and, you know, if someone wants to contribute it, take it, of course, but not something that the core team would necessarily benefit from working on. And, you know, somewhat self-serving, but going back to your point on MobiSense, is, you know, seriously looking at taking something like a MobiSense, which is the full, you know, Java framework, and, you know, looking at the open source project, we've done Moho, which is an abstraction. And in fact, Jay was part of the design of that as well in the early days that we did on that, which is, you know, a Java API for asynchronous telephony, blah, blah, blah. And that opens the door to a lot of different engines, such as our SIP method that we work on, Sailfin, MobiSense. So I, I really think, you know, instead of putting Yate there, take a look more at, you know, porting to a SIP servlet engine that has media services capability as well. Perhaps you could update the wiki right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense. If right? everyone agrees, I, I, yeah, well, I'm so the point is we have a community member who's interested in seeing that happen. I think that's yep. a perfect And it's us as well. Yeah. So. I was just going to say, and the great thing about Robmax is they're not carved in stone. Yeah, it's a wiki. No, this one is. A, <laughs> I'll see you you a question for <laughs> Then I was just curious, and this is a little related to, uh, to Jason's point, or kind of a grander version of that. Um, are you still at the point where you're working on things that you're personally interested in and you're kind of cherry picking like, hey, I need this, I want this, I'm going to do it? Or are you at a point where you're internalizing like, hey, this is the relative priority and you're developing stuff that you think that other people might use? I think it's both. Certainly, if I have a project where I need something fixed or something done, that gets very high priority. Um, I A lot of the functionality I've added recently have come to either the idea or the code has come from the community. So my effort is really um, finding the patch, testing it, making sure it doesn't break anything, and merging it. Awesome. Which is, which is great. I mean, that's that's the best way to do it. Um, and, and then some of it does come for me, but that probably gets the least direct effort. I okay, guess. cool. I asked for two reasons. One, to make sure that, that you're doing stuff that you care about, not, you know, getting front work. And right. two, because there's always a huge risk of if nobody's asking for it and nobody's willing to actually put in their own sweat equity or ready to write checks to somebody to do that, mm -hmm. then is it really worth the time and the effort? Yeah. So it, to answer that concern, definitely this is a big part of, of the work I'm doing professionally right now. And so I have a very vested interest in it. Um, any code I'm writing that isn't paid for, it's because I think it's cool or I, I can get paid to use it. So. Perfect. I, I've actually spent some time on the XMPP because I think it's such a great mm -hmm. uh, integration point. Awesome. Ben did the first integration, but we've been working together to, to improve it. So, yeah. And I guess that also extends to if you need to refuse a patch, feel free. Like, you are the maintainer and you're endowed with the privilege of saying this doesn't belong in core. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, that hasn't, I mean, I've, I've found some patches that, you know, weren't quite right, but uh, yeah. It hasn't been an issue so far. Cool. So, everyone's happy with doing git pull requests to him then? Yes. And another thing to the list is the async AGI stuff. Okay. Yeah. That I think that that I I like that if somebody wanted to tackle it as the first um, async protocol because okay. of the fact that I feel like it would be less effort than the free switch stuff because the commands are the same. We already have that stuff. Right. But it will introduce and let us see what aspects of the async nature of you know what those changes will look like and how bad that will be, and so it's affect the dolphin a bit. Right. Yeah, I really see that as at least an 09 task, probably pre 1.0 because I don't want to be making changes of that nature. You know, that late. Um, the concern I have is that yes, it uses some of the same protocol as our existing AGI, but it, it's a different way of looking at calls. It appears in, it appears in the internals are going to have to track more call state that's kind of being copied from Astros on the fly, which introduces things like, well, how do we sync that state to start up, and how do we maintain it on across the restart? We have to be more intelligent about that because with AGI we have a context. I mean that in the programming sense, not the asterisk sense. With AGI, we'll have to create that context. So um, I agree with you. It's it's clearly the way we should be going, and it would dovetail into what we want to do with free switch. But it is, I think, a bit more than I want to take on for zero eighty. 
So you are, but you are looking at doing some of the free switch stuff for that token for zero nine, or uh, it it should be in the wiki either way, right? Well, no, no. I mean, I I, I was a little confused that I, were you saying that the free switch stuff would, in your mind, be a higher priority than the async and GI or no, the, no, no, no? Okay. I think I think the kind of infrastructure needed to support them is similar. Yes. And so I think Good. they right. they can go together. Awesome. Um, if if async AGI is a higher priority, I don't mind. Right. No, no. I mean, I was just. I was just curious as to your mindset. Yeah. Do you have a question? I, I have one. On, on um, the virgin, num virgin number of, of uh, adhesion overall, I mean, it seems like this is widely used today. It, it's even commercial you know, at, at this point. Mm -hmm. It seems like we should have a one point X version number already on this. What's what? At what point in the roadmap do are we looking at uh, a 1.0? Numbering. I mean, I think we're there past. I'm just from a marketing perspective, we might gain more market penetration if, if they thought it wasn't so beta. I guess that's a good point. Um, yeah. If we wanted to do that a shorter term, then I think it would make sense to essentially bug fix zero eight to completion. Yeah. And call that one point out. Yeah. That's right. that's a pretty acceptable approach. I would add yeah. to that some serious work. And some, yeah, I, can't, I can't stress to you just how much that could be turning new developers away from. Okay. Is there a downside? Well, as a new developer. Yeah. Sure, sure. And I remember, I mean, it wasn't that long ago that I was in your shoes, so I definitely can appreciate that. Is there a downside to just making, as weird as it sounds, 095 1.0? That's what I was yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait. just calling it. And um, oh, wait, five, you mean? Oh, wait. I'd like to go through the, the bug list. Yeah. Uh, so the bug list I've got right now, I felt comfortable for 085. Um, I'd like to go through it one more time and, and, and actually get your guys' help in testing. I know I know a lot of you are, are using the latest versions, and that's great. But I mean, if we're going to go for a 1.0, I would like to get that little extra polish on it. That makes sense. Um, so maybe maybe instead of like six, 1.0, I could see that. Cool. We just started talking about this, but I, I think I think it is. I, I think we've thought about this enough just in the past couple of minutes to, to realize that yeah, we do need a 1.0, and that going with like 085, all of the bugs fixed. Can be like a great way to, to codify 1.0, and at that point, because that's the easiest path to 1.0, we can document the hell out of 1.0, which will solve the documentation problem too. And, and to a point on that, documentation of the you know, we had talked a while back, you know, on the O'Reilly front of possibly putting together an adhesion book right. as well, right. and with going 1.0 and focusing on documentation. That may be the best way to make that happen as well. And I'd like to say, an appeal to the community, um, documentation is something that almost everybody can help and contribute to, even if you're not necessarily a deep, heavy coder. And, and newbies even more so, not to put you on the spot, but I mean, you know, because you bring a fresh perspective to, to sure. put it yeah. in a language that people that know the internals too well struggle to articulate well. Yeah, so. you get to say, who wrote this crap without, you know, pointing <laughs> yeah. yourself. Well, so. there's, there's a, I mean, I recognize it coming from a different language. I mean, I recognize that there's a, there's a huge gap in, in knowledge difference from somebody who's been and somebody who's been doing it for 5, 6, 10, 12 years. Sure. And I, I'm seeing that from that perspective now coming into the period of training and all the same time. So as, just as a general feel, you guys, you know, if something you can do, Specifically, I could use help migrating from the old wiki to the new one on GitHub. Um, if you want to write blog posts, if you want to help document methods, um, if you want to improve the in code documentation for the API docs, all of that would be very, very welcome and very helpful. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to fix type scientist to fix typos because yeah. you know documentation is always got them. So, and, and, so, yeah. and let me also give out a shout out to Ben Langfeld. I know he's been working on adhesion casts. And I don't know if his site is live yet. But that's I saw it. Yeah, it's up. There's one's up. Oh, awesome. Yeah, he was supposed to put one up. Yeah, adhesioncast.com. I think it's plural. Sweet. Jason, I'm sure we'll tweet that out. I'm just going to tweet right now. There's one up there. Oh, it says private video, though. Uh oh. All right, well, Ben is probably listening if he hasn't gone to bed, so fix it. Ben, make it on private. So, related to the versioning, I would definitely suggest looking at using the semantic versioning stuff that. Tom Pressmore. Sinbar.org, I think. Yes. And what, what is that? Uh, I'll he, it up he came up with a oh. series of rules for how to version things in a way that 
actually oh, mean something? Semantic versioning. If it's yeah. in production use, it's 1.0. I'll look that up. I haven't seen that. Are you using it in production? I, I don't know of any. I don't know of any. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then it's 1.0. There you go. About seven different places. Yeah. Doctors. There are, um, oh, by definition, you decided to use it. That was that's production. That doesn't get much bigger. Oh, I've used it in production. It just is a reasonable set of rules. So, I mean, it's pretty reasonable. I've used it. Yeah. If there are any other questions, I'll go ahead and shut it down. But um, anyway, that's our roadmap. So. Thank you. All right. Yeah, um, ben, ben hurt me too. So. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's three o'clock. Um, I know that people want to get some hacking stuff done. I know Jason, you had. There's two two things. One right. was I, I. It wouldn't hurt for Jose to do a little blurb on what Moho and a subservient engine is, right? As we're talking about that, if people are interested, I don't want to force it on people. But would it be interesting to have that information okay. for people? I'm asking. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, are you ready? Yeah. Or I can do that. So, why don't you kind of, you know, over a subservient engine, you know, contrast asterisk, we can help out with that, and then maybe what Moho does. 